look at some of the basics of Onshape now. So once you log back into your account, you can see the test that we started in the first tutorial. So it's a blank document, but it's um, referring back to where it would be saved. Okay. So we can see again, we've got our three work planes. We're just going to go ahead and create a series of different shapes and explore some of the features and what happens whilst we're creating them. We're going to click on a work plane to start a sketch. So the way you need to think about this is every time you're creating a new part, that you need to tell it where you want it to be, create the sketch, and then turn it into a 3D part. And if you repeat that process every single time, it'll make it very easy to understand. So this one, we'll click on the top work plane. So I'm just left clicking on that work plane. Then I'm going to sketch. And I'm thinking about the shape that I want to create. You get all of the shape options and all of the different drawing tools at the top. On the right hand side, it's more about your measurements and your limits that you can set on your drawing. And then on the left hand side, it gives you more of the shape options. And in the middle, it's um, a way to manipulate the shapes as well. So we're going to start by creating um, a cube, a simple cube. So we're going to just draw. I like to lock it to the origin when I start, so there's always a point that you can measure from. And you just draw it out by left clicking where you want to start and then left clicking where you want to finish. Once you're done to, to drawing that part of the shape, you can use a dimension tool, which is the arrow um, with two heads and the lines between and then click on a line, drag it away, by, you don't need to hold in the click now, you just move your mouse away and then you click again to drop it down. And this is in inches you'll notice at the moment. So if I just make this two inches each side and two inches up that way as well. So we've got our, our square drawn to start with. Once you're happy with your sketch, you then have to confirm. So with a green tick up here we confirm. And you'll see a couple of points to notice, it's appeared here. So if we ever want to go back in to edit that, we can use it in our features list on the left hand side, or our history pane, that I like to call that with students. Okay, so if we right click on there, we can edit and it goes back into that sketch for us to change. So we can finish that. We're now going to extrude it. So extruding will make it into a 3D shape. There's loads of features along the top in different ways that you can use sketches, different ways that you can turn them into 3D objects and manipulate them as well. So we're just going to make it from a square into a cube. So we're going to click extrude. Once you've told told us what feature you want to do, you have to then answer the questions that pop up in the box. So the first one is, you need to tell the computer which faces and sketch regions you want to actually use. So you can either click on them in your drawing, or you can select them from your features list on the left hand side. So I'm going to select sketch one, and you can see it's already turning into a cuboid. You can either use blind, which you can just drag the arrow up and down, or you can put in the number just down there. So I'm going to type in 2, so it's a cube, it's exactly a cube. I'm happy with everything else, I'm starting a new part, I'm going to click tick to finish. Using my mouse now, I'm going to right click and rotate around so I can see it from all different angles. I can use the scroll button on my mouse to zoom in and out, and you can left click to select different faces and different parts of it. What we can remember from that point then is using this cube in the top right corner we can get back to our normal views so click in to look at it square on from the front or if you click on the corners it gives you the isometric views of that as well what we'll do now is repeat a similar process but to create a hole inside of our cube so it looks like a hollow box maybe i'm going to create this sketch on the top work plane so instead of using the work plane here i'm actually selecting the top surface of the cube so if I select the top surface, I can then tell it I want to sketch. So I've told it where I want to put my sketch, I've started a new sketch. You draw your shape, so I want a square to extrude in here. If you want to, you can go in there and add your dimension, so we'll do that now. I'm going to measure the distance of the lines apart. So I click on one, then I click on the other, and then I put my distance in. I'm going to go 0.2, and I'm going to repeat that on all of the sides. So I click on one, click on the next, and then fill that in at 0.2. So working my way around, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, four times, one more to go, I've got a nice even gap on every side. You can do that in multiple ways, um, that gives you lots of opportunity to edit that later on. Okay, We're happy with that sketch, we're going to click the green tick, and we're going to now extrude again. So repeating that same process, click extrude, I'm going to tell it the face that I want to extrude, and you see it's adding it on the top. We can now change that quite dramatically. So if we click the arrow here, it flips it the other way. The other way that you could do that is by dragging the arrow downwards. 
okay it's telling you that there's a problem it can't join that's because along the top here it's trying to add that cube to the other but it's saying it's all enclosed so it's not going to work so we need to change the option at the top to remove that way it's going to cut it away from the original cube that we did and it's happier I'm going to make it go down to 1.8 so it's pretty consistent on the thicknesses all around my cube that's just be me being quite pedantic I'm going to click the green tick and what we can do now when we rotate round is see that we've created a hole in there okay we'll create another shape now as well and explore the chamfer and the fillet tools so on the top work plane in fact we'll do this on the front work plane I'm going to create a sketch and I'm going to look at it from the front so it's square on so on my cube in the top right corner I'm going to click on the front face and it looks at it square on I'm going to draw my circle in this top left pane and I'm going to dimension from the centre of the circle to this edge and I want it to be the vertical height to be two inches away and then I'm going to do the same for the horizontal distance as well to be two inches away that just gives me a little bit of room to work I'm going to measure the diameter of the circle to be two just keeping everything straightforward I'm then going to also do another circle from the center and I'm going to dimension that at 1.5 so you can see I'm creating that donut kind of shape but it's also got the center filled in so I've finished the sketch we'll make that a 3d view using your right click button and now we're going to extrude that cylinder if you select it on the actual drawing you can select the large circle you can select the gap between the two or the inner circle if you selected sketch 3 just as a straightforward one it would extrude the whole thing so that's not what we want to do. We don't want to just tell it from the sketch to guess what we're doing. We'll select it from the actual drawing itself. So I've selected the part that I want to extrude. I've now changed my mind. So in the extrude regions here, you can close that part and it'll ask you to select again. So say I want the inside. I could do that on its own or I've changed my mind. I can do the ring around the outside. So I'll do that one now. We'll make it 0.5 and we're going to click to finish so you can see that different colors so we've got two parts in our in our creation now and in the parts list we've got part one and part two so if you want to hide one to get it out of the way you've got the eye icon and if you want to hide the other we can change that and just toggle between them I'm now going to round the edges of my cylinder so using the fillet tool along the top you click the fillet tool and you can click on the edge there and I'll change that to 0.1 for now I'm happy with that round. I'm going to do the same on this um, edge on the inside there. So it's got 0.1, 0.1. If I want to make it a little bit larger, 0.15. You can see there it's not happy. So it goes red and it says you've, you've rounded them too much basically. So they've overlapped in the middle. So I'll have to reduce that. Let's say 0.12 and see how that goes. There we go. So you've got 0.12 is orange. That's all good. And then if I change my mind and I don't want any, I can close them out of that menu again click the green tick and we're finished we'll rotate that round and on the other side we're going to add two chamfers so if we just position that in the center clicking on the middle click on your mouse and dragging it along we will use the chamfer tool so the chamfer tool we're going to click on the edge and the edge the other way you could do it is every edge associated with the face so if I click on that face it's then doing the whole thing 0.2 is too big that's why it's thrown up the orange line change that to 0.12 and that will work and you can see the chamfer is the straight angle as opposed to the rounded edge and then if we rotate that around you can see what we've created so far so that's just a brief introduction into sketching on different work planes extruding shapes and the chamfer and the fillet tool there's lots of ways that you can create them same objects and we'll explore in the next tutorial a few more different options you could choose to use